Thank you for listening. I'm Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss21, and this is Apollo Taj Mahal. We are the guys from the Did You See That Shit Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. We know you're going to like the interview, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all the social media platforms, as well as the Missing Time Productions YouTube channel. And don't forget to go to DidYouSeeThatShit.com for a complete rundown of all of our content. Right, Apollo? Yeah. Right now, I want to welcome Kelvin, the mama's boy, Tiller, to the show. My favorite moments from PFO won last week, man. Congratulations. Huge win, brother. Thank you very, very much, man. It was a, it was a blessing being there. Thank you. That knockout came from nowhere. I mean, literally, you were on the, you were on the ground. The referee stood you up, and uh, I looked away for a moment, and the next thing I knew, you were uh, looking over Alan Carr, and when they played the replay, Jesus, man. I mean, Kelvin, that's power, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been practicing that punch and just the timing. I knew he kind of threw an overhand baseball right, not real technical. And uh, I just timed it perfectly. I got the best reflexes in the game for a heavyweight, and I just went from there. So you used to be a light heavyweight. You're coming up to heavyweight. I wanted to ask you how that transition's been. I actually started at middleweight. My whole Bellator career was at middleweight, but I was missing weight probably about two pounds, no more than three pounds. And uh, they eventually kicked me out. And, it just been injuries, man. I've just been getting injured and just some of the worst injuries. And the weight, you know, sitting around eating, feeling sorry for myself. The weight just started coming on. And I'm heavyweight now, so we'll go from there. Well, you look great, man. Uh, you're only 27 years old. You're on a three fight winning streak. And the, one of the things that I really like about the PFL is that it, the, this tournament bracket style it's kind of refreshing and not that you would but certain fighters do turn down fights but in this model you don't really have an option to do that you just got to fight whoever's next is that what you really like about this format too yes sir i do uh i've never been into turning down fights uh the only time i ever had to turn down fights i was injured so the opponent change and uh the last minute thing the last minute opponent change that happened to me really wasn't a big deal for me um but I, I like to fight everybody. I believe I'm the best. I believe I'll win a million dollars. I believe I'll win it next year and a year after. And so there's no uh, turning down fights for me. So, yes, I do like that. A million dollars, man. Uh, what are you going to do with that million dollars? I know Bass asked you, uh, you know, he was asking everybody, uh, you know, after after the fights. But, I mean, really, have you sat down to think about what you're going to do with a million dollars? Because, that, dude, that's life-changing money. Yes, sir. It's life changing money. I would just uh, pay off my debts. Um, I would like to open a barbershop and a gym. Uh, I'm not too uh, flashy of a guy. I like to take care of my kids, take care of my family. And uh, But yeah, like I say, a million dollars just to begin. We'll come back. We'll win it two times, three times. And I like to retire early. I know that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so there was a lot about the, the last minute, uh, the, the change of opponents, the heavyweights. There was a big shuffling of that because of the, the commission there in New York. I know you didn't say that really didn't affect you too much at all, but was it, was it just a lot of unusual chaos that you're not really used to the day before? I mean, how was all that? Uh, man, actually, my amateur career, that was pretty much how we fought an amateur. We, we a guy, uh, he uh, back out of the fight in, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours before the fight, and we just, we'll get in there and we'll still do what we got to do. So that's never been a problem to me. I've been, I've been conditioned that way for a long time. I never wrestled, uh, so I don't. I don't. I know wrestlers say they don't um, know who they're fighting uh, until the day of, but that that wasn't me. So, but it's just a mentality. I think I can beat everybody. So it really wasn't a big uh, a big uh, issue to me. Yeah, that's uh, just how things were done back then. So you mentioned it a little bit earlier, man. You're a Bellator vet. You're, you're actually a Shamrock FC vet, too. I'm, uh, being in the Midwest, I'm very familiar with Shamrock. I wanted to ask you, how did you enjoy your time fighting it for Shamrock? Uh, man, Jesse Finney, he was, he was one of the guys that believed in me big time. So I'll always have love for Jesse Finney. Um, he just had issues finding me fights around here. Everybody say I'm UFC caliber. And a lot of guys were like overpriced themselves, so to make it seem like they wasn't turning down fights, and they made it seem like Jesse Finney didn't want to pay enough. We all know that the local shows had a budget, and and so, uh, I mean, he was just a real good guy to I me. Mean, he always took good care of me. Um, he just can give me the fights that I needed to get to the big show. But uh, I have nothing but good things to say about him and the organization. 
Have you had a chance to to speak with uh, Ray Sefo? Like, just sit down and really talk with them, man, because uh, he is just truly, uh, he's a breath of fresh air when it comes to uh, the sport, I believe. Um, I have not got to sit down and talk to him. Uh, I'm, I'm sure my manager has said uh, some to him, but as far as me, no, sir. Um, I like Ray Sefo, man. I watch a lot of his old fights. Uh, kind of look up to the guy. Um, but no, I haven't got down to talk to him, though. Sat down and talked to him. Have you had a chance to look at the, uh, the the other field of heavyweights? I know Alex Nicholson had a very impressive win with that that flying knee up there. In my opinion, the, that moment and your moment were the two jaw dropping moments of the entire evening. But have you had a chance to kind of size up your competition? Alex Nicholson, he had a, a good performance, but I see him get kicked three times in the leg by a guy that weighs two hundred and twenty seven pounds. And if you get kicked by me, you won't you won't be walking. If you get kicked more than two or three times, so Alex Nicholson is not a um, I don't think he is uh, my, my my big issue. I don't think I have real competition in, a, in, in the tournament. Like, skill-wise, anything's possible. Anybody can get knocked out. I understand that. But I didn't see nobody outstanding that has really got me shook in my shoes. So, uh, r- really, no. I haven't seen nobody fight besides what I've seen at the shows. But I, I believe I'll win it. I know I'll win it. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident in that. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, PFL2 is coming up here. Are you going to be uh, in Chicago for that event? I will not be in Chicago. My, my next fight is uh, July 19th in the back of New York. Uh, and that's at uh, Nassau, right? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yeah, it's going to be a great time, man. Well, I look forward to speaking with you again, man. Uh, you, the floor is yours if you'd like to shout your sponsors. Uh, anything you like, Kelvin? Um, I'd like to uh, shout out my manager, Brian Butler, and my team, MCA, uh, Thatcher's Training Center. Uh, PFL for giving me an opportunity and I said big man well, I appreciate your time so much I look forward to speaking with you again and good luck with your next fight sir yes sir thank you very much bye <laughs>